Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am back with another interesting topic in the Tosca automation playlist. So let's look into another common issue which you might encounter while working with Tosca and especially around a string manipulation. So uh, let's pick up a scenario. This is the Swag Labs uh, demo website where I have added two products into the cart. Okay, and these are two products uh, which have got different prices. Now the scenario here is uh, I want to calculate uh, the total price for these two products which are added into the cart. Okay, so I want to verify that the total price is as per the expected results. And for that, I need to add these two values uh, which are in dollars, right? And also there are some decimal points here. So uh, how can we do that? Uh, what is the problem here? Let's look at this. So for this, uh, uh, first we will go ahead and we will scan these two elements from the application. Okay, for now uh, we are not able to see uh, any elements with those price. So uh, we are going to increase the filtered items here until uh, we see those price elements. And these are the two price elements here. And for now, these are uh, both unique. So we don't need to add any additional properties or we don't need to change the identification mechanism, right? So we are just going to add this module now. Uh, I'm going to call this cart. Okay, and then save it. And let's close this. So we have got our module now. So let's go to our test case folder here called string. And then here we will create a new test case. Uh, we will call this um, calculate total price. Okay, and then uh, we are going to add our module here, uh, which is the cart. Now the first uh, step is to uh, store these values into the buffer, which is the price of these items, right? Uh, we could also change the module attributes here so that we don't actually see the price here, but we will rename it to item one and item two, right? Now, if I go back to my test steps, uh, I can see item one and item two. Here, uh, we have to use uh, some property, uh, which is the inner text, okay? And we'll store it into a buffer. So we'll call this price one, and we will change the action mode to buffer here. Same for this. So we will give the inner text and then price two. Okay, and then we will change it to buffer. So now uh, we have buffered both the prices. Now we need to calculate the total, which is uh, we need to sum these two different price items, right? Now, um, if I go ahead and use another test step here called set buffer, and uh, we are going to name this buffer as the sum, right? And here, we need to calculate the sum here. So we can use an expression called calts, which basically can calculate any uh, particular mathematical operation, right? Um, inside this, we will use the buffers. Um, so we have got two buffers here, price one and price two. So this is the calculation um, expression where we can add two different prices here. So until this, uh, it looks fine, but will it give the expected result? So let's see that. Uh, first, uh, let's go ahead and execute this. Before that, I will just rename this to add uh, prices. Okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now if I look at the scratch book here, uh, you can see uh, in the first step, 
uh, it passed. So it was able to capture the price and store it into a buffer. You can see uh, this was the first price and this was the second price. But uh, when we try to add these two prices, uh, you will see that it will throw an error uh, for the expression. So it will say that it is not a valid expression uh, which can be used in this particular uh, Cal C expression, right? So uh, this doesn't work. So we cannot directly add these two prices which contains a dollar sign. Now, uh, what can we do here, right? So let's uh, make some changes, okay? So um, let's go ahead and remove this step. And here, let's make some changes to the price one and price two buffer, right? Uh, which has got that particular price value with the dollar. So here, uh, first we need to remove that dollar from those price items, okay? And how we can do that is by using the string replace method. So in this string replace, uh, first of all, I need to pass uh, the text which we want to replace, right? So that is our buffer. So I'm going to use that B price one here. And then we need to pass the expression, right? So what do we need to replace? And that is the dollar sign here, right? So we will mention the dollar here. And then what we want to do with this. So either we can um, put a zero, uh, before the price, or uh, we can just uh, leave it empty, right? So we'll uh, replace it with a white space. Now, uh, so this is the expression. So this is the text which we want to replace, then uh, what we want to replace, and then with what we want to replace, right? So these are the three things which uh, we need to mention here. And then um, I'm going to close this. But there is still a problem here, right? Do you think this will work? Uh, so how we can check that is we can right click on this expression and we can do a translate value. And you will see that it was not able to replace that dollar sign. It was not able to remove that dollar sign, okay? Now, whenever you are using some kind of special characters, you always need to escape these characters. Otherwise it will not work in Tosca. So what we need to do here is we need to replace uh, the special character by adding a backslash, okay? So let's put it inside the double quotes and then let's add a backslash here and then the dollar sign. So what this will do is it will escape this particular character, okay? Now, if I go ahead and translate the value again, this time around you will see that it has removed or replace that dollar uh, with a white space. So that's no more there in this particular value, okay? So uh, this way we can uh, do a replace uh, using the string replace expression. And the same we can do for the price two. So I will just use this expression here and I will replace it with price two. That should give me uh, the new price if I just check this again, so this is the, okay. Now, uh, what we can do is, uh, now we can calculate the total here and we can use the same expression which we used earlier, which is calc, which is the calc function. And inside this, uh, we are going to use the buffer, uh, which has got now the new values, right? So we are going to use B price one, and then plus B price two. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and try this again and let's see if we can get that total price. So let's try and run this. Okay, so you can see the execution has passed this time. And if we go ahead and look at the logs, so the price was set uh, and then uh, it calculated the total price, which was 39.98, right? Now, uh, if you have got this total price somewhere on the application or uh, in your requirements, you can put a verify action mode and verify this total price as well, right?
So this way you can use uh, the buffer action mode to buffer different values from your application. And then you can use the different string methods like the string replace uh, to replace some of um, the special characters or some characters which you want to remove from the values before you perform some calculations um, and also do some verifications on them, right? So this is very helpful um, and it's a very common scenario uh, you can come across uh, not only uh, for calculating the total price in a shopping cart, but it could be a scenario in several other situations uh, related to your web applications. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.